complexity causes suffering if it's uncontrolled you know, things just get beyond your control um, and that can happen, you know, if you're hit by three or four catastrophes at the same time you know, maybe you have if, oh, the political system collapses, there's hyperinflation you lose your job and you have someone that you love or two people die and maybe you get cancer, something like that like that, those things happen to people and they just think, well, there's no getting out of this like, it's just too much and you know, one of the things that's very interesting about being a psychologist is that what you learn if you're going to be a psychologist is that people come to you with mental illnesses and that's almost never true people come to you because their lives are so damn complicated they cannot stay on top of them in any way that doesn't make it look like they're just going to get more complicated and so then that causes symptoms, you know, it's like it's this old idea, it's sort of a metaphor for genetic susceptibility take a balloon and blow it up until it's beyond its tolerance, it's going to blow out at the weakest point well that's sort of what a genetic susceptibility is, if I just keep adding complexity on top of you at some point you'll blow out at your weakest point you know, maybe you'll get physiologically ill, maybe you'll start drinking, maybe you'll develop an anxiety disorder, maybe you'll get OCD, maybe you'll get depressed whatever, there'll be something about you that's the weakest point and if I just push, that's where you'll blow out So that's a mental illness, but those things almost never just happen sometimes, but not very often, usually people have just been hammered like two or three different ways and then they collapse in the direction of their biological weakness and then maybe you put them back together, but it's almost always a complexity related phenomena rather than a mental illness related phenomena not always, but almost always so, okay, so now you got this complexity problem and you think, well, you deal with it conceptually and that's sort of akin to the idea that it's belief systems that protect you from death anxiety the ideas are roughly comparable, but again, that's, that's wrong it's the sort of thing only a psychologist could think about, think up because psychologists think that everything about you happens inside your head, so to speak, in your psyche but that's not true there's a huge chunk of you that's outside of you completely and so this is a really good example, like, you know, we know the oldest cities, this is a medieval city in France a beautiful old city old cities were walled and the reason for that was because they were places of wealth and if you didn't put walls around them then other people would come in and steal everything and kill you, so like having some walls was a good idea like the same as having walls in your house is a good idea walls between your rooms are a good idea or borders between categories are a good idea and so part of the way you simplify the world is by building walls, walls around your space because then a whole bunch of things can't come in and so you don't even have to think about them it's not conceptual, it's practical and so and you know, one of the things I think I figured out recently is the fundamental political difference between people and it looks to me like the fundamental political difference is how many walls should there be around your stuff and the ultimate liberal answer is zero and the ultimate conservative answer is well, <laughs> bring on those walls, man 